Hi, it's Charlie Minotto from HalfWheel.com, and over the years I've reviewed a lot of different humidors in all shapes and sizes, but when it comes to traditional desktop humidors, like the ones you see in front of me, most of the desktop humidors I have reviewed have been in the four to $600 price point, which is basically the upper middle class of desktop humidors. And so for my next review, or as it turns out, my next seven reviews, I wanted to see if there was a cheaper or cheap humidor that actually works that I would recommend. And I specifically started looking to see if I could find a $100 humidor that advertises holding 100 cigars that was a traditional wooden humidor, so no plastic, that would work. And I quickly realized that probably wasn't going to happen. So I ended up changing those qualifications a little bit and bought seven humidors that all meet basically three requirements. The first is they got to look like a traditional desktop humidor. So there's no uh, plastic, there's no acrylic humidors, there's no converted coolers. They got to be things that you would think of when you think of a humidor. The second is that they need to hold at least 50 Robustos and not the advertised number. They needed to be capable of legitimately holding it without any humidor Tetris. 50 cigars, normal size cigars quite easily, of which I think all of these do. And the third was that there was a hard price limit of $175 before tax or shipping. Now I will point out some of these humidors were bought on sale, but I also think some of these humidors are on sale year round. So whatever the case is, you should be able to, with a little bit of research, find any of the seven humidors that are being reviewed as part of the series for less than $175. This is the Yanibus Cigar Humidor. Now up until last September, I had not heard of Yanibus as a brand. It seems to mainly sell, not surprisingly, uh, Chinese made marijuana paraphernalia, um, but it does sell one humidor, which is this humidor. Now, just because I hadn't heard of Yanibus doesn't mean I haven't seen this humidor before. In fact, I see it every day because this humidor, this red one, is actually my home. This is the Calibri and Daniel Marshall collaboration, the Quasar humidor. It was originally released in 2014 in a slightly larger size. And then um, in 2015, they came out with a smaller version in red, as well as there's also a dark gray color. And it's unsurprisingly got knocked off. And um, I'd seen a couple knockoffs before on eBay, but this is one that's on Amazon. It's sold under the Anibis brand. We paid $159.99 for this humidor last September. And it is, at least as far as the exterior is concerned, basically identical outside of the color. Uh, there are four colors. There's this orange, there's a yellow, there's a silver, as well as a black color that looks strikingly similar to the dark gray color, uh, the alternative color for the Calibri version. But from the exterior, it is basically identical. There are some minute differences for those that care. Uh, the Calibri does seem to be a little bit deeper. So this dimension on the exterior is just like maybe a quarter inch longer, but um, this is my humidor from home. And I honestly couldn't tell the difference until uh, we put them side by side and even like stack them on top of each other. Uh, the only other difference is these points um, on the Yanibus humidor are not as pointy as the ones on the Calibri humidor. Um, but once again, I don't think you would really be able to tell. They actually don't really align perfectly. They are very close. It could also be the case that all of the, the humidors that are made in this pattern are just slightly off. That would not surprise me if they're not identical, but otherwise, it's pretty much the same thing. They in fact feel like the same. Now they are different on the inside and I will get to that very briefly. So the Calibri one has this, uh, the, the most notable feature I would say, or the, the two most notable features that are different are the Calibri one has this uh, Daniel Marshall style um, wooden uh, humidifier cover, which is not removable. It's a big annoyance of mine with all Daniel Marshall made humidors. And then the other big difference is that the Yanibus humidor has a tray, whereas the Calibri humidor does not. Um, there are more differences on the inside. Uh, you can see the difference in sort of how Daniel Marshall built out the inside of this humidor versus how the Yanibus one is built. Um, there are some small differences, like you can see this trim piece, or it's not a trim piece, it's actually a, a, a piece that's there for the humidity. This is much different than what's being used on the Yanibus humidor. The lids are different. Um, I don't know how well you can tell on camera, maybe from that angle. But this right here, the sort of the area what lines up with this on the Daniel Marshall humidor is much longer. So it goes further down the lid. Whereas on the Yanibus humidor, it's pretty far up here. You can actually see, I guess on that side, you can see where it is. Um, I don't know how much of a difference it honestly makes. Um, and you can tell if you look at like the joints and stuff, um, you, can, you can see there's a, a pretty noticeable difference in quality of construction, um, and there should be, because these humidors, which were limited and have long since sold out, uh, were $1,500 compared to the $159 that we paid for this humidor. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way because it's not really relevant for the rest of, or at least most of the rest of the review, given the price difference and the fact that you can't get this. Um, in terms of the basic specs, I will look at my cheat sheet here. It is 13 and a quarter inches wide, 
I am not entirely confident in these exterior dimensions because it's a little bit hard to use a tape measure given the pointiness nature of, of how these things expand, but 13 and a quarter, 11 inches deep, and then seven inches tall. On the inside, it measures 10 and a half inches from here to here, eight and a half inches from here to here, and four and a quarter inches from the floor of the humidor to this piece right here. I will note that uh, this has a pretty aggressive amount or decent amount of space that seems to happen but that's like up here in the lid um, that I imagine you could store cigars on, particularly if you're using the tray. I'm guessing it's probably close to three quarters of an inch, so you could probably get another row of cigars um, sort of if you filled up the tray completely and then you wanted to put like a, a layer of cigars on top of the tray, I'm guessing that you've got plenty of room to work with um, on there. In terms of the included accessories, the lid is magnetic and that has the uh, analog humidifier as well as this, which is, or sorry, this is a hygrometer. This is the, the humidifier. Um, and this uses a uh, super absorbent polymer so it doesn't use the floors foam that uh, all the other humidors in the series have seen so far and i'll get to that in a second of like interesting note um so this is magnetic as you can see but it actually has like just magnets that have been placed onto a metal backing here and then snap into place it's uh you know it's functional it's not the cleanest looking thing but i don't know if anyone can honestly see it uh and then it does come as i mentioned with the included tray, which has a divider. There's also another divider that goes on to the bottom right here. All right, so all seven humidors in this series are going through the same testing process. So the first thing I do is I take a brand new sensor push device. This is a data logger that can measure both relative humidity and temperature. So I take a brand new one, I calibrate it, and then um, I place it inside of the humidor. And the advantage to this is that I don't have to keep opening and closing this lid to get data points. It will send all the data to my smartphone on a minute by minute basis, and then I can create some fancy charts, which you'll see in a few minutes. So the next thing I do is I take out the included humidifier. I take a brand new sponge. I put it into a large glass of distilled water. I then place it on a small plate and I put it inside of the humidor. And this is to start the seasoning process. I leave it there for one week. I come back after the first week is done. I take the sponge back out. I dip it back into a large glass full of distilled water. I place it back on the plate. I close the lid again for another week and I finish a two week seasoning process. And that's to help get the dry moisture or the dry wood to introduce some moisture to it. So that way, if you were hypothetically putting cigars in here, it wouldn't be sucking the moisture out of your cigars. It's an important step you take with all humidors. And you know, I don't know how dry some of these humidors ship to. So it seemed like a good idea to start with. So once the two week seasoning process is done, I take the sponge out and then I start with the included humidifier. So every humidor up until until this point has used a floors foam humidifier. This humidor does not. It uses this device, which is a plastic container that's got inside of it uh, super absorbent polymers. So this is a time lapse. I'm gonna start with a 20 ounce glass and I'm gonna pour a half ounce of super absorbent polymers in their dry state inside of the glass. And then I'm gonna pour 10 ounces of distilled water in the glass. And what you will see is that unlike a sort of salt, uh, there's something going on here. And so as the name implies, the super absorbent polymers are super absorbent. They can absorb, some research says, up to 300 times their own weight in liquid, and they will expand 30 to 60 times uh, their original size. So they're gonna go from the salt-like consistency, and then they're gonna end up being this sort of weird gel-like consistency. And within about 10 minutes, most of the liquid in the glass is absorbed um, and eventually it will sort of reach its maximum point where either it has absorbed all the water that is around it or it uh, has absorbed as much water as it can by weight. Um, if that's the case, you're going to want to dump out the excess liquid um, and then it's going to start releasing that water as moisture or as humidity and it will eventually get back down to its original size and consistency. So it'll go um, from being that gel-like consistency to the dry salt-like consistency. And then you can put water back in and it will once again release the water as humidity and the process repeats itself. And that is why these make as a very attractive solution as a humidifier. Now it has some pros over the floor foam humidifier. The most notable one to me in my sort of four or five years of using them is that at least to my eye, I've never seen um, them develop any mold on either polymers or on any of the containers that hold the polymers. I have seen them brown over time, 
but I haven't seen any noticeable signs of mold or really any signs of mold. I'm sure if I put it under a microscope, there's probably mold there because there's mold seemingly everywhere. But unlike floor semi-humidifiers, which just uh, have a propensity to mold, these do not, even when they are releasing tons and tons of humidity. And that's an important point to mention on sort of the cons list here, which is that it's not like a boveda or even a humidity bead, although there are some bead-like superabsorbent polymers, but it's not gonna be a treated bead. You're going to need something to help to regulate down the, the moisture that's being released, because if not, it is, you know, upwards of 93, 95% humidity. It's basically the same thing as just leaving out a jar full of water, in my experience. I use super absorbent polymers all the time to season humidors um, because it, it they're, they're great at doing that. Um, the other downside, which I noticed here in sort of the testing of the cannabis is that, and you can you see that on the sort of the glass here, is that they can't absorb... Uh, you, you can't fill the glass up with the full amount of even a mixture of superabsorbent polymers and water, otherwise it would have a gigantic mess. They end up getting a lot larger structurally than the amount of moisture that they've been introduced to. And that means that for something like this, uh, the humidifier, you can't, like, if this is four ounces, and I don't know exactly what it is, but if this is four ounces in volume, you can't put four ounces of water, you can't put four ounces of superabsorbent polymers and water in it. In fact, I'm guessing that I put maybe a couple ounces of water, if that. And then the other problem is, is so once they get to their sort of maximum state, if there's any more water that's left sort of floating around here, you need to dump it out before you put it in your humidor, otherwise it would drip onto your cigars. Um, and so what that means is that if it's put into a dry humidor or a humidor where it's undersized, you're going to have to be filling this up a lot because it just can't even if it's a four ounce container, it can't actually contain four ounces of moisture or of water um, because of the way that the super absorbent polymers work. Um, you will see super absorbent polymers sold for cigar applications as a gel based humidification. What that usually is, is a certain amount of super absorbent polymers that's then mixed with a mixture of distilled water and propylene glycol usually a 50 50 mixture and the reason why that's um, being mixed there is to help uh make sure that this isn't putting out those 90 95 percent um you know relative humidities it's to help uh ensure and restrict the amount of humidity that's being put out so now that i've bored you to death with super absorbent polymer talk uh the way that this testing process works is i take the included humidifier once it's been filled or charged, however you want to describe that, and put it inside of the humidor for four weeks, close the lid, and don't open it for those four weeks. So the chart that you see right now is the results from the sensor push device. Now, this humidor started seasoning at 59% relative humidity, which was pretty high, all things considered, for this test, um, and came out of it at 86% relative humidity, which tells me that um, the humidor itself, the box, actually does a great job of retaining moisture, or it was properly seasoned prior to us getting it. Now, um, you see there are two drops there. I suspect that what had happened was, was that um, those are sort of signs when the super absorbent polymers are going through their various stages. I'm guessing that up until the, um, the that sort of first big drop, that the polymers might have actually been absorbing moisture, and then they started to put it out. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I certainly think that that second drop after the sort of gradual decline, and then it gets steeper, I think that's when the polymers got um, to be completely dried out. And once they get dried out, they're going to start trying to absorb the moisture. They're probably not absorbing that much moisture, particularly given how few polymers are in there. But once the four-week process was over and I opened up the humidor and took the humidifier out, the polymers were completely back down to dry, which isn't surprising. So after that's done, I take the included humidifier out and then I put three 60-gram Bovida packs in um, for six weeks. Now, the Bovida packs um, weighed 185 grams going in and they came out at 149 grams. And you can see that they, you know, did their work. They start absorbing a ton of moisture and then they uh, get to their sort of 68% relative happy place. And um, they did their job. It's, it's not surprising. And once again, I think it speaks well to how well the box holds humidity. Um, if you're wondering about the weird temperature drops sort of in the first uh, quarter of this test, uh, that was the uh, snowstorm we had in Dallas and the office lost power intermittently. So fun times. Um, and then the final test um, is I take each humidor and after I take the bovidas out, and then, so it's just the humidor, there's no humidification inside of it. I then place it into this dry cabinet device that you see there on the screen, and I leave it there for two weeks. The dry cabinet is uh, something that's made for electronics. It's set to 36% relative humidity, and the idea here was that, at least in theory, I could test the seals. I don't really know what to make of this data because, quite frankly, the data has been the same for all of the humidors, at least in terms of how that line has looked. Um, 
but in the interest of just sort of giving you the information that I've already given you with the competing models, um, I felt like it was necessary to do that here. All right, so when I was starting this test, I wanted to find a box that I could tell you if you put your favorite humidification inside of it, it will work. And it took five humidors, but I finally found it. The Yanibus humidor, both from the data that I just showed you, as well as from just sort of looking at the humidor, is going to keep humidity inside of it. And that is the most important part of a humidor, and it is surprising that it took this long in terms of this test to get here, but it does work. And that's the start of the pros and cons list. In terms of another major pro, I would say that the design, which is probably not for everyone, uh, but for me, I'm a big fan of it. I always like modern looking humidors. I like humidors that don't have logos on them. And this certainly passes the test. Once again, this humidor right here is a humidor that I keep at home. But I understand that the radioactive cheese color is not for everyone. It certainly does not look like your grandfather's humidor unless Chester Cheetah was your grandfather. Um, and so some people may just want a more plain looking humidor and, uh, you know, you're going to have to find something else because this is certainly not plain. Uh, the third thing I would say is that the included accessories, while I don't really care that much about them, uh, are nice in this case. Um, I don't care about the, you know, I could care less about this hygrometer, but um, I do like the fact that they did not put floors foam uh, humidification in here. Uh, certainly super zorn polymers are not without their cons. Uh, the tray is a very nice feature. Um, the two dividers are great to have, and the magnetic lid is something that I think should be on all humidors at this point. Um, so that's the pros, or at least the, the three big ones. In terms of the cons, um, there are a few. So in terms of fit and finish, this is not a $1,500 humidor. There's a little bit of overspray on the lip right here, as well as up here, I think. Um, you can't see it on video, but if I get a close-up picture, you can see it. Um, it doesn't smell or anything like that, but it certainly does have some signs that it, uh, you know, was not the most meticulous paint job. There also is like a little bit of like paint blotches right here. Um, those aren't super noticeable unless it gets under super high light and um, you get close enough to it. But um, I can see it right now with these big video lights up. Uh, the other thing I would say is that the super smart polymers, the humidification, um, this is something where you need to do a little bit of research. It is not plug and play. This is not as simple as Boveda or anything like that. Um, and this can damage your cigars, whether that's because of too much humidification or whether that's because you just fill this up with water, put it on the lid, and then close the humidor and the water drips out. Um, it is a little bit more work um, than just opening up a plastic bag and, and throwing the device inside of it. The third thing I will say, which probably does not apply to you, but is something that's really weird for me, is that that I know the people that are responsible for this humidor. Um, I know Jimmy, the guy that was at Calibri at the time who was in charge of their design, um, who like created the whole Quasar series. Um, I know Daniel Marshall, like um, it's really weird, um, you know, when somebody knocks off a product that you know the designer for, it doesn't, uh, this might be the first time it's really happened, particularly when it's like this blatant. Certainly um, people have knocked off concepts before in the cigar industry, but this is just a, I mean, like a straight, straight up knockoff, like, you know, something you would see, um, you know, being sold as a knockoff. Um, and uh, it's a lot easier when it's like knockoff Louis Vuitton, cause it's like, that's a big corporation, whatever. But um, it does hit home a little bit differently um, when I know the person. Certainly I'm guessing if you're like a designer, probably have a similar thought. The most interesting part about this humidor review to me is something I should have seen coming, which is that this humidor I'm guessing, much more so than any other humidor, is the example of cutting out the middlemen. It's only sold on Amazon, or at least in this particular format. Um, it's sold by a company I've never heard of that doesn't seem to be selling a lot of products and seems to be basically only selling them on Amazon. And as such, if you had the same exact humidor um, and another company like JC Newman or Ashton with Savoy bought the humidor from the same factory and tried to sell it, it would not be this cheap, particularly if it got sold at an American cigar store where the cigar retailer then needs to make up their markup. And so in a lot of ways, this is a humidor that you can buy for $160, but compared to some of the humidors I've tested so far, um, it has a big advantage. It gets to cut out a lot of the middlemen and a lot of the other people that need to make money off of selling products like this. And as such, it's not surprising that functionally speaking, this is much better of a humidor. It was apparent from the moment we took them out of the box in September that this is a much better built humidor than the rest of them. And it bears that in the results. I have some ethical sort of things I have to figure out with recommending a product that is a knockoff, but in terms of you know, is this humidor a good humidor? Yeah, there's there's no question about that. Um, and if you like the design and you like the sort of uh, you know outlandish colors, 
it's a great humidor, particularly for the money. If you want to learn more about humidors, uh, you can go to halfwood.com where we review all sorts of cigar accessories, whether that be uh, cutters, lighters, humidors, um, humidification products. We also review cigars, and we publish cigar news on a daily basis.